So in a few seconds, you will see a picture up there of 11,000 Googlers gathered at an internal conference and setting a record for the largest yoga class in America and the third largest in the world. This happened last year, and I led this group. And when the picture comes up, you'll see standing on stage with me is the Google CEO, Larry Page, of course, wearing Google Glass, and Susan Wojcicki, CEO of YouTube, in whose garage Google was founded. And in that picture, you see these 11,000 Googlers gathered, and we came from about 100 different countries. And between us, we spoke about 300 languages. And at the moment the picture was taken, we were chanting one giant OM in the whole convention center. And that's how we set a record for a short yoga and meditation moment. So it is a magic moment where the Googlers who had gathered to talk about new technologies were pausing for a short moment to what I call to go from the internet to the inner net. I joined Google eight years ago. And as somebody who had been trained in an ashram in India, who lived and grew up in an ashram in India, I created a yoga program at Google for the Googlers. It is called Yoglers. And every Monday, <laughs> every Monday, several Googlers will leave their computers and meet in this outdoor location next to a gurgling brook and practice yoga with me. And the nearly eight years I've been at Google, I've never missed a single class. That is my commitment to the community unless I'm traveling, in which case somebody else will lead this practice. So yoga and meditation are hugely popular at Google, and every week there are more than 100 sessions across Google offices around the world with more than 1,000 people practicing. And currently, I'm working on a goal to bring 100% yoga everywhere at Google, which is if you work at Google, in no matter what office around the world, you can practice at least once a week and we are at about 50% of our target. So I marvel at the fact that this iconic company of the internet age has uh, embraced an internet tradition going back some 2,000 years. And there are three reasons why I think it is so popular. The first one was articulated by, at a meeting which we had with the Vietnamese Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh. So Thich Nhat Hanh had held an all-day retreat at the Googleplex, and we had a meeting at the end of it with a group of his monks and a group of his uh, yoglers or, or Googlers to talk about how we can learn from the mindfulness community and make Google products better to improve mindfulness principles. And during that meeting, one of the monks said, we live in opposite worlds, and periodically our worlds cross over to each other. Because if you go to the Plum Village, where Thich Nhat Hanh resides for most of the year with his monks, he said everything is designed to bring in mindfulness, the way we do our cooking, the way we chop our wood, the way we sit in meditation practice. And then for short periods of time, we drop into your world of distraction when we have to check email or update our social media page. You Googlers spend most of your time immersed in this fast-paced, information-rich internet world and then periodically you drop into our world when you sit on the meditation cushion, when you step on the yoga mat. Both these communities need each other and they need these crossover moments. The second reason is the parallel nature of these two worlds. Twice in the recent few years, I've hosted a group of Tibetan monks at Google who build these beautiful sand mandala patterns by arranging tiny grains of sand. And then at the end of these five days, they sweep it away in about 20 minutes or so to symbolize the impermanence of life. And the Google engineers gather around these monks and love to watch them. And the reason that they enjoy watching this, when I've talked to some of these engineers, they said, what the monks do is very similar to how we build software here, in that it is a very creative process. It is a very collaborative process, whether it's groups of five monks or groups of five programmers working together. And the software we build is also impermanent in that years of work can get completely swept away as the next version of software, the next generation of technology takes over. 
The third and most important reason why Googlers embrace yoga, I believe, is that the core principles of the yoga community and the core principles of the Google community are the same. The word yoga means to join, right? To join yourself to your mind, body, and spirit. To join your little self to a larger sense of self. To join yourself to the larger consciousness out there. In a similar way, Google's core principle is also about connecting, to connect us to each other, to connect each of us to all of the information that humanity has ever created, and to connect all of humanity to the collective wisdom that exists within humanity. The yoga community uses the internet. The Google community uses the internet. And during the popular yoga classes that take place at Google, those two communities come together in a very harmonious way. So if you will, take a nice deep breath and just like we did in that first slide I showed you when we set this record for the largest yoga class when I was standing in the center, take a nice long deep breath and join me in one giant harmonizing of our voices as we chant a single Sanskrit syllable, Om. Let's begin. Oh, oh. Thank you. Namaste.